Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Mystery Box Function Challenge. In the purple mystery box, there is some math, and your challenge is to figure out what it is. You can use the link in the description if you want to try this out on your own. And when you've got an idea, come on back and see if we get the same thing. All right, I'm going to start with a zero. Okay, zero gives us negative one. How about a one? And one gives us that infinity error. So maybe we're looking at a rational function. So I'll just jot that down over here. And let's let's continue exploring. How about a two? And maybe a three. Mm-hmm. And maybe a four. All right, so it looks like we're getting rapidly closer and closer to this x-axis. Let's take a look closer to the asymptote. So, so let's do one half. Okay, and let's do three halves. Okay, so we've got an arm here, typical rational function arm, and maybe we've got an arm over here. So we need to explore more of, of this one. I'm actually going to just draw in that asymptote uh, so let me do that. So an asymptote at 1. Okay, let's see if we can flesh out this arm here. So we'll put in a, a negative 1. Oh, all right. So it looks like we've maybe got another asymptote at x equals negative 1. So maybe we've got a quadratic on the bottom. Of the uh, of the rational equation, so and we might have something that goes uh, down to infinity and up to infinity here in the middle. Uh, let's let's take a look at that. Let's put in a negative one half. There we go. Oh no, we've got something that um, goes down on both sides. Interesting. Let's let's look on the on the left. Of the, that second asymptote and see what's going on. So let's put in a negative two. And then a negative three. Uh huh. And negative four. Okay, it's kind of looking symmetrical to what we saw over here. Let's let's go a little closer to the asymptote there. So let's look at negative three halves. Mm -hmm. So you can see we've got these two arms on the left and the right uh, of this middle section, and they are are going up to infinity at the asymptote, and then they're they're going along here the the x-axis for uh, their horizontal asymptote, and then we've got this thing in the middle that looks like it's just a um, you know down to negative infinity on both sides and up to negative one in the middle. So what could be going on here? Well, let's start with the vertical asymptotes. I think that's the easiest place to start. Since we've got two of them, I think our our bottom here has to be x squared. And since it's at 1 and negative 1, it would be x squared minus 1. So how do I know that? Well, if I put in a 1 and square it, I would get a 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. And that's what we're looking for for those vertical asymptotes. They happen where the denominator is 0. Likewise, if I put in a negative one there and squared it, I get a positive one, and then minus one is zero again. So this would make sense for these vertical asymptotes. What else might be going on? Is this possibly it, one over x squared minus one? Let's put in a few numbers. So if I put in zero, I get negative one, and that would be one over zero squared minus one. Oh, well that works for zero. Let's put in two and see what we get. So 2, so I'd have 1 over 2 squared minus 1, and that would be 1 over 4 minus 1, or 1 third. Aha, that's what I'm getting there. Let's maybe try, um, let's try this negative 3. So 1 over negative 3 quantity squared minus 1. So negative 3 squared is going to be a positive 9, so that would be 1 over 9 minus 1, or 1 eighth, and I'm getting that 0.125. This is working for all of these points. So I think I think this is it. Once we identified that denominator based on our vertical asymptotes, it was really just as simple as 1 over that. All right, let's take a look and see if we're right. Yeah, 1 over x squared minus 1, and we can graph that thing. 
Yeah, so you get these two symmetrical arms on the left and right, and then this big uh, curve bumping up in the middle. Interesting shapes when you have that quadratic on the bottom. Well, how did that go for you? Did you sort out that this was a rational equation? Let me know. Thanks, everybody.